What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 171 of Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Eric Kidd. He's Eric. Good to see you. And I missed 170, didn't I? You did. Yeah. We had a good time. Oh, you can right. catch it on the download. <laughs> Are we having fun yet? It's Tuesday, and we just started. And okay. We're already having fun. It's Tuesday, December 28th, 2010, when this is going out live. Nice to see so many people joining us live, getting excited about the new new uh, website that's coming next week. Lots of people in the chat room, uh, especially our beta testers who are looking at the new website, are saying there's this, it, the website's coming along fantastic, <laughs> but there's this massive gap right on the front page where it says Eric's bio. That will be uh, completed before launch. Any time now. <laughs> Maybe during the show. Maybe I'll just do it right now. <laughs> just kind of, yeah. You just, just talk on amongst side, yourselves. All start the... typing and stuff. Yeah, there yeah. you go. There you go. What are you doing? <laughs> We've got a little creeper here. All everybody. right. Well, hello. <laughs> what are you doing? You just came to say goodnight? Oh, and you wanted to show your new pen. All right. To people at home. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. This is what happens when things get out of control upstairs, and poor Becca is trying to manage. Things are out of control downstairs too, Robbie. Totally. Okay. Good night, sweetheart. Love you. Good night, Daddy, sweetheart. I put this for candle. Me and Mama put it up. Okay. It's got Mom's <laughs> approval. You better be careful. <laughs> <laughs> good night, sweetheart. Head on upstairs. Pen. Pen. Pink pen. Very good. Pink pen. <laughs> She hears uh, she Bye, hears Tally. some uh, some familiar voices because uh, we actually have a good friend joining us tonight. Uh, Christy is uh, is here in the studio. Uh, hasn't been around for quite some time after getting a job at the radio station uh, down in Peterborough. So it's nice to see her. And I I know uh, Tally hears her voice down here and and uh, wanted to come say hi. So and to show off her beautiful pen that she got for performing so fantastically at uh, ah. her. Uh, her dance recital at Christmas. Oh yes, I forgot she is a performer. She is. Yes, can't indeed. you tell? I well, indeed. <laughs> She's a performer slash ham. <laughs> at, at Christmas, I wasn't sure which ham I was supposed to go it's for. It's hereditary, Robbie. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> did you have a good Christmas? Indeed, I did. Yeah, and you? Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Nice to see some family and. My daughter got me a new shirt. I thought I'd wear oh, it that's tonight. Nice. Yeah. yeah. How Canadian looking, huh? <laughs> the plaid. The plaid. Yeah. How's everybody doing? We'd love to uh, hear from you in the chat room, category5.tv. Let us know your geekiest Christmas gift. We'd love to hear. The, uh, it doesn't really qualify as a Christmas gift, but <laughs> something that I did pick up recently was this. Wow. Which is kind of funny because I literally just... It's, it's funny, these little scores that you find when you, when you just kind of go shopping for something. I was looking for a cheap DVD player. Because our DVD player broke, and you know me, I I don't like to replace things. I know if you. I don't have to, right? So we wanted a cheap DVD player to plug into the 5.1 surround sound all-in-one DVD VHS everything unit. So I picked up this thing for 37 bucks. The thing's got a USB card reader and SD card reader, so you can put your external hard drive with all your family movies and stuff like that, oh, plug it into USB, Sweet. and they all come up on the screen in like uh, in SD, like nice high quality uh, video. Better, actually better. Well, let's uh, set it up and play with it right now. I was thinking we, we can show everybody. But because it's like an off-market oh, okay. kind of Walmart special They're for 37 bucks, one, it's, right? like, okay. it's possible you might not find it. If you do find it though, you can ask me questions about it. It's an Onyx 1080p up converting DVD with HDMI, SW2300XS. But it actually does really well. And computer yes. geek Robbie likes it. There, I just thought I'd throw <laughs> the endorsement in there. I do have some some gifts that I'm going to be showing uh, maybe next week. Oh, I didn't I nice. didn't want to bring down too much stuff, but I've I've got some pretty geeky things that I that I picked up for Christmas, especially having to do with Star Trek. Oh man! So you okay. know you want to check that out. Of course. <clears throat> yeah. Of course. All right, let's take a look at the chat room. Jot. Happy birthday. It's great to see you. 
Uh, we, we have a birthday present for you, and yes. Christy is going to uh, say hi. All right. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? How? No, okay, we'll stop. I'm already getting questions about the DVD slash USB slash SD combo unit. Uh-oh. It, 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 it works really well. I don't know what it plays. It says it plays AVI slash MP4. Like, that's how cheap it is. It doesn't even specify what codecs or anything. It just says plays MP4 slash AVI. Everything that I've fed to it, it, it played, so. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, okay. Okay, what do you got going on? Well, why don't we uh, jump into a question? Fabulous. John Steers. Hey, John. Hi, Robbie and Eric. Hey, that's nice. Uh, hi, John. What I was trying to do is use my old IDE XP hard drives in my new Win mm -hmm. 7 box. I've read that there is a connector <coughs> called SATA to IDE that is supposed to work. I've tried KVM switches to use both systems with one monitor, but I can't get them to work. With question marks. That seems the best alternative. My XP system works just fine. I'd like to be able to use it. I have a great Ubuntu 10.04 and there and want to use it. What do you suggest? How can I use two computers with one monitor? I don't really want to install anything in my Win 7 box. It's mainly for PVR activities. Mm -hmm. KVM switches only function in VGA, not DVI, as my Win 7 does. I don't really notice much loss in monitor resolution when uh, both systems are on. What KVM switch do you recommend? They must be USB. Both my boxes have USB, but I can't get the XP box to respond correctly. Mm. Thanks. John in Dallas. Well, there's a couple things with the KVM. KVM is keyboard, video, mouse, and a lot of them will have audio as well, so they're still called a KVM, but sometimes they'll nickname them like a KVM A, yeah. and it's got the audio cable as well. Uh, you can get, uh, as Pyrus Rock is, is mentioning in the chat room, you can get DVI KVM switches, no problem. You can pick those up, uh, but they are more expensive. And if, depending on what you use your computer for, will determine whether or not the D sub or VGA versus DVI argument is valid for you. I personally wouldn't want to use VGA because of the the fact that it's an analog signal. So you've got your digital card converting to analog, and then your monitor, which is a digital monitor, converting back to digital, and you've got signal degradation. So. Uh, somebody who um, who has good eyesight, for example, or me with my glasses, I would really notice the difference between that and a true digital signal from DVI. Uh, and then these days, a lot of newer systems are going to actually be using HDMI. Um, as far as what KVM switch you can use, pretty much for what you're probably wanting to do, two computers, one keyboard, one uh, monitor, one mouse, uh, possibly one set of speakers, so you want the audio component. It, it, they're really, it, you could get away with a pretty cheap device for a, for a home user. The only time that you really need to step into like the more expensive units is if it's for a production environment where if something goes yeah. awry, then you've got a problem as far as... And, and another thing is just the distance from the computers. If it's just sort of under his desk, both computers, it's not quite as big a deal right. as if you're... K a KVM keeping. switch? typically is going to be like six feet from each point because video, VGA, uh, or DVI is typically six to ten feet, mm -hmm. I think is the max. Uh, if you want to go any further than that, you need a KVM extender, exactly. which is quite a bit more pricey. And then you're talking about, this is something that we would, uh, Christy, we would have used in the radio stations when we were laying computers in other rooms so that exactly. the studio couldn't hear them, right? So different thing altogether. Uh, in a normal environment, though, KVM yeah. switches are, are going to do the job for you. There, there's so many that you can choose for, uh, to use. IO Gear has got some. Uh, I'm sure we could find something for you that, you know, but you just want to find one that has the DVI if that's what your, what your system's using. But then again, you could use, if you're, again, if you don't have, if you don't notice a difference between DVI and D-sub and you want to save the money, you could probably just down scale your DVI card to, uh, to D-sub. I don't think I have a, a D-sub adapter handy to show you, but uh, a lot of monitors will come with that, where you've got the adapter mm -hmm. for your cable, and it converts it over to D-sub. You've uh, got all kinds of other things. i got all kinds of other here. things, yeah. <laughs> I'm just looking at what, uh, 
even just what Tiger Direct has available is, you know, you, t you do a search for KVM and you find a, a ton of different units, um, just kind of like this, right? And it's just a little box that has one keyboard. Uh, this one is USB because it's USB keyboard and mouse, and VGA. You want again possibly DVI. So. Mm -hmm. But you're looking, you know, that's a $25 unit. They're cheap. So look around. Uh, well, I'll give you I.O. Gear. I've had website. really good luck with a lot of the I.O. Gear stuff that they're, I've tried. They're decent enough. They're well yep. built. Uh, I've never had one fail on me, the, those things, which takes me back to a point I was just making a moment ago where uh, about mission critical. You know, you see yeah. KVMs that are in the hundreds of dollar range. We're talking servers and, and units that, you know, where you've got six or seven servers all connected together with one keyboard, video, mouse. That's a different different ball game than, than what you're doing at home. Uh, simply iogear.com is their website. I'm sure we could find here if we did a search. KVM, Let's see what we come up with. Maybe I'll do a search for KVM switch just to narrow it down a little bit. That didn't really narrow it down, did it? I didn't narrow it 12 a bit. 12 pages, 12 pages, but you might want to throw in the products, KVM, VGA, and two port. There we go. Oh, and how about got combo? DVI right there. Yep. They've got DVI right on the menu there for you. But actually, just okay. above that was combo, which might. I think that's. So it looks like you're going to find what you're looking for on IO Gear, and, and it doesn't have to be IO Gear, and we're not, and you know, saying you have to buy IO Gear. It's just we've used them. They work. Yeah. They're good. They're affordable. So there you go, John in Dallas. That's, yeah, that's a great website too, iogear.com. Uh, lets you track down exactly based on what specs you need, that, you know, the perfect KVM switch for you. Mmm. Cheers. It is good really coffee. Really, it's just coffee. coffee. <laughs> I bought some nice Canadian mix, Colombian Arabica. I don't know how it's Canadian, but they call it the Canadian. I guess because it's like Canadians love their morning coffee. Canadians. And they've said this is... The mm -hmm. Canadian cup of coffee, and it's good. It's all right. It's I'm nice. quite happy with it. I may just deke out. If you see me disappear, it's gone for the second cup. Yeah. But we got enough people around tonight that uh, we, we maybe assign someone to the runner position. <laughs> 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 we are going to be looking at VirtualBox 4.0 tonight, uh, which was released this week. If you can Very believe it, nice. they took a big jump from 3.2 wow. all the way up to 4.0. Fantastic stuff. We're going to be checking that out. Also, time tracking on GNOME so that we can figure out how much money we need to bill our customers and uh, where we're allocating our time as well. We're going to be checking that out. And of course, GNOME being uh, Linux uh, based desktop environment. So, we're talking Ubuntu, um, any Linux uh, distribution that has GNOME or GNOME libraries. So, check that out. GNOME? That's Never seen what it before. we're going to be talking about in just a little bit. Cool. All right. We have another question. Actually, we have a few questions here tonight, Rob. That's good. Yeah. This one's from Ron Deguy. Hey, Ron Deguy. Hi, Robbie. Lately. That is Ron Deguy. Oh, Deguy? Du du Could du be Deguy. Du du I don't think we'd get the I just way. liked the way it sounded when you said Deguy. Deguy. It's Ron. Like the, the guy. man. He's the, yeah. he's, he's anyway. The, he's the guy. This is a question All from right. Ron. Hey, Ron. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's the guy. Hi, Robbie. Hey. Lately, I have been going over my allowed download from my internet provider. I have three computers as well as Wii, iPod, and a PSP all on my home network. I would like to limit the amount of each of the limit the amount each of the above can download in a month to keep me below my limit. Any ideas on how to do this? My current router does not have this feature. Any mm -hmm. idea which ones would? Thanks, Ron, the guy. All right, Ron. Cheers. All right. Well, I know there is a, a special edition of uh, DWRT that will enhance your router. Yeah. It's the commercial edition that you you know you pay a little bit for. It's like it's twenty euro or somewhere around there. But I I'm not sure if they're still making it, and I and I we can take a look if uh, if it's available. It was the DDWRT uh, QoS for quality of service uh, special edition. So I'm just doing a quick search there to find out if it's still available. And yes, folks, I've worked with Robbie for a while, and he really does type that quickly. <laughs> Let's see. Special version. 
a uh, special version of DDWRT which extends QoS capabilities to do this. Set maximum bandwidth available per net mask or MAC address. Uh, so that what that does is it allows you, using QoS quality of service, to specify um, specifically how much bandwidth each device by MAC address or, or net mask is able to use in, in any given amount of time. Um, so that's a special version uh, available apparently through the DDWRT shop. Are you able to uh, keep track of how much each device has you, well, you used can do that anyways. over the course of the month? You can do that, that anyways. seems to be what uh, yeah. Ron's Oh yeah, you can, you can monitor, but I, I, I have the understanding that he's looking for a way to actually stop access at that point. Is that right? Yeah. If, if you just want to keep an eye on it, DDWRT out of the box, the free version will do that for you. Um, you can monitor bandwidth on any of your devices. You can set up quality of service, but it's a little bit different in that it doesn't work by, uh, by limiting bandwidth at a certain cap, okay. whereas the QoS Special Edition does. Um, instead, the quality of service on the default DDWRT, what it does is it takes um, wherever, well, it prioritizes tasks right. that are going on in the internet. This device is only going to be allowed to use this much of the bandwidth, this one is, and yes. this much is kept open At, for if, another device. If it's being used by more higher priority devices. Right. So for example, you would set your Wii as a lower priority device and Skype higher, so that when you're on a Skype phone call, the kids playing the Wii doesn't interfere with your Skype call. Oh, okay. right? But then as soon as you disable Skype, all of a sudden the Wii gets more priority. Oh, it does, okay. That's quality of service. Uh, and it works fantastically uh, at, at kind of keeping your, your network seeming fast all the time. That, that said, that doesn't allow you to cap. You'd have to pay for the uh, additional special features uh, in order to cap at that point. You could do it manually, obviously, but um, to do it automatically is a special feature. Tomato firmware, on the other hand, uh, which I do not... Tomato? You know, tomato? Tomato firmware. I, I'll admit I don't have a lot of experience with tomato because I got into DDWRT when, when I was comparing the feature set of the two at the time. Of course, DDWRT is much more uh, feature-packed. Tomato is, is a, a lot simpler. It's very easy to set up and, and use, but it doesn't have the same feature set. So someone like myself who wants all the features goes with DDWRT. But then again, Tomato does a better job out of the box of quality of service and has that, uh, that kind of uh, stuff already set up. Tomato firmware. Here's just a screenshot off their website. Oink, oink. Mm. All right. I guess like you set up. See, you can see that uh, you can set up any uh, Mac. Pardon me, any Mac device, and you set up the m maximum kilobytes transferred. I suppose. Again, I don't have a lot of experience with it, but what I'll do is I'll I'll give you a link to to this website. This is uh, PolarCloud.com/tomato for the firmware. There are less devices compatible with Tomato than would be with DDWRT, but Tomato is a good place to start, and DDWRT if you uh, if you want those extra features, and maybe give it a try out of the box and see if the QoS out of the box is going to do it for you, and if not, you you may uh, you may want to purchase that special edition with the enhanced QoS. All right, thanks for the question, Ron. Are you are you making notes about my <laughs> grammar? <laughs> that was a note for myself. Okay. Yeah, and I'll leave that alone for now. All right. A note okay. for himself to remind me about my grammar. Yeah, gotcha. I'll, I'll harass you later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, we have another uh, question here from Louise. Louise? Louis? I, I, I was thinking that was probably a Spanish name. It was probably, well... Write it on your list. We'll talk about it after. L-U-I-S. Louise. I say Louis or Louis. All right. No, I think there'd be an O in there if it were Louie. We've covered all the possible pronunciations. Okay. Of the name. Hi, Robbie. We can, hey. What's the best way to <laughs> encrypt an entire volume in Ubuntu 10.10? Oh. 10. Wow. Let's pretend I have a 500 gig hard disk, but no data on it. Thanks. Oh, well, if there's no, no data, data on the drive. Data, tomato, tomato. Beta, beta is the one that. Uh, oh, sorry. We'll leave. We'll, we'll, 
Let it go, Eric. I love that line from Dr. Pulaski when she said to Data, she called him Data and said, and said, you know, what's the difference? Data, Data. He says, one is my name, the other is not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Robin. One yeah. is correct. <laughs> no, actually, sure. Ox Oxford will allow both. But because it's a, an empty I drive, think. because it's an empty drive, I would say. Like, Are we back to the uh, encryption? Back now? to okay. the question. Okay. Because it's an empty drive, during the installation process of Ubuntu, you'd be able to choose to encrypt that drive. That's fine. If you haven't done that already, the the tool that it actually that is included with Ubuntu is dm crypt, which is a part of uh, the Linux kernel after, I think, version 2.6. Um, so, you, I, if you're going to install the operating system onto that drive, you could just do it through the, through the installation process. I'm going to just go to Wikipedia is a, is a great resource for finding information about this kind of thing. And I'm just going to uh, DM crypt. I'm not sure if I said that right. I think that's what you said. Did I say that? Okay. I think that's what you said. In my head, I was getting confused with DDW, uh, okay. DDWRT, and then we start talking about DMCrypt, and I'm thinking the wrong thing. Uh, DMCrypt is a transparent disk encryption subsystem in Linux kernel version 2.6 and later. It's part of the device mapper infrastructure. You can read this article for information about what it does and how it works, and then there are some external links for making that happen. But the reason that I want to kind of point you towards that article and then get you to do some searching on your own is because what you want to do uh, is going to be unique to you based on your, your situation. And encryption is something that you don't really want to, I wouldn't want to give you a, a cookie cutter version of how you can set that up because then the next guy goes to do the same thing and all of a sudden they can't access any of their files and that becomes a, a big problem. You know what that is? Unfortunate. That would be. That would be. That would be because yes. then that's the night when I hand that off over to you and you can, <laughs> you can fix it. <laughs> Uh, so uh, dm-crypt, uh, also get into your favorite search engine. I'm going to use Google, and I'm going to type dm-crypt uh, Ubuntu 10.10 and just see what, uh, what comes up. There are 24,000 results. Hopefully Google has done a fairly decent job of prioritizing them for you. But also in the uh, Ubuntu forums, uh, you'll, you'll find a lot of help there as well but no cookie cutter uh, way to do it that I would recommend other than in setting up encryption during the installation procedure of Ubuntu itself. Okay. And it's a blank drive, so it sounds like that might be the best solution for you. Well, cool. we have more questions. You want more questions or where are we time-wise? Well, it's not quite news uh, time yet, is it? Well, we've got, uh, we've got VirtualBox 4.0 to install. We've got, uh, we're going to be looking at Hamster Applet for GNOME. Uh, this is a time tracking uh, software. Um, so let's, let's do that. Let's take a look yeah. at uh, Hamster. How's that sound? I'm going to bring up Synaptic Package Manager under Administration. Now, I'm using Ubuntu. Now, of course, there are many different ways that you could do this, uh, but I'm using a Debian-based package manager, Synaptic Package Manager. And of course, you can do this through apt-get, however you want to do it. You could do it with, uh, with yum if you're, if you're running a, a yum-based distribution that, that has this in the repositories. All I'm going to do in Synaptic Package Manager, which again is found under System, Administration, Synaptic Package Manager in Ubuntu Linux. I'm going to do a search for hamster. And you'll see that it has given me the hamster applet, which if you look at the description, this is a time tracking applet for GNOME. Helps you to keep track of how much time you spend on various activities during the day. Now I was looking for a, a good tool to, to help me with this. Now I'm just clicking to install. It's telling me that I also need Python Evolution. I'm going to say OK and then hit Apply and allow that to happen. I've always wanted a, a good application that makes it easy to very quickly keep track of the time that I'm spending on, be it client work or whatever else it is that I'm doing. Bring Tim, yeah, you, uh, Eric is showing me Bring Tim, cool absolutely. That's, it's better than a toy, it's, okay. it's very helpful. Okay. But, um, but what I have to do with the Bring Tim is I'm transferring that data over to a spreadsheet or something and then submitting that to billing and it, and it becomes an extra okay. application. So, so one of the things I wanted to do was try to streamline that step, still using Bring Tim in the mix for phone calls and things like that, but for, for ma main, the main work that I'm doing when I'm working on a particular 
development project or whatever, being able to keep track of time and then generate reports so that I can see bar graphs and things like that on how the time oh, right. was spent and uh, kind of determine how I should approach different projects. Um, so, so the simplest method that I found was this hamster. And it's done installing. It's really, really quick. Now that I've installed it, it's a Noma Plet, so I can actually, while you will find it on your applications menu, you'll actually be able to right-click on your panel and go Add to Panel, and you'll see that in this list now, you're going to see one called Time Tracker, which you can now add to your panel. There we go. That's all there is to it. Close it down, and now you see no activity up in your panel. You, you went like you were going to say something. Just no activity. Was, wow, no activity. Let's give it some activity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, uh, first of all, right click on that, no activity, and go preferences. This is the first time that you run it. You want to set up how you want the system to work. Now, this is kind of neat. It's going to automatically remind you of current activity every 27 minutes by default. So if I told the system that, hey, I'm working on X project, 27 minutes into it, it's going to remind me, hey, this is what you're supposed to be working on, so that I don't get sidetracked by a phone call or whatever else and, and then forget to go back to the project I was working on, uh, or worst case, it would be forgetting to stop the clock, really. So you can set that however you like. And there are different, uh, different settings there that you might, uh, you might play with. There are categories, which by default you've got work, day-to-day, -day, and unsorted, and we're going to look at that in just a moment, and then you can also use tags as well. Uh, which work kind of like keywords. You can resume the last activity when returning to a workspace or start new activities when switching to different workspaces. So in this case, you could actually have your different Linux desktops, like how I can move around on my desktop like this. So desktop number three could be a specific application, for example, uh, or a specific job that I'm working on, whereas desktop number two would be another, de another job and the time tracker uh, hamster will actually automatically uh, change what it's tracking when you're looking at different workspaces. So then all of a sudden it becomes this really great um, tool for uh, keeping yourself uh, on task because you can have certain applications that are uh, attributed to each job on different virtual desktops. So if I'm working on, say, a client website on desktop one, I can set this to automatically start tracking time for that client when I'm working on desktop one. If, on the other hand, I'm over here in the GIMP on desktop 2 building a logo for a client, I can have it automatically be tracking that client. It'll automatically It'll stop automatically the clock, stop the switch. clock on the one, Sweet. switch to the other clock. Very nice. Yeah, exactly. So there, there are a couple of neat little advanced features there, even though it's, it's simple in the way that it functions and the way that you set it up. So now that I've got that set, I've just closed that, and I'm going to single click on no activity. And now I can fill in what it is I'm doing. Now, it starts out with a couple of examples, like doing handstands. Lunch? I don't tend to do at work. I do lunch. Is there any so, Guinness in that? No, no Guinness. <laughs> so let's do, uh, OK. So here's the task that I'm doing, right? So now I go Start Tracking. And now, this is, it shows me what it is that I'm supposed to be doing right now. And it's actually tracking time for that job. If I again click on it, and then over here, I've got a little edit button. It's a pencil. If I click that, it's going to give me this dialog, which allows me to fill in a description. Because when I'm working on a, a, a client job, for example, just it may. Demon. I was going to say demonstrating. <laughs> I just was talking at the same time. Okay. <laughs> we'll get to finishing that word. Um, it could have been worse. Demon Cat could've 5. Because each job, I'm going to be doing different tasks. I want to keep track of what each portion of the task is that I'm working on. So here I am demonstrating Demonstrat. how to use hamster. Okay, And you see that it's created a timeline here, much like a ruler, and that this job is currently in progress. So I've saved that. And now if I single click up there, again, it's going to show or hide. And it shows me that I am currently one minute in to this particular task. Once I'm done, I can stop tracking this task. So I'm done for now, or I've picked up the phone and I'm switching modes to a different task. I've hit stop, and now it's gone back to no activity status. So next up, I'm going to take my lunch, and I can add tags if I want. 
and I've started. So now I am on lunch officially. All right. So I'm out to lunch. I'm going to have a coffee. Would you like fries with that? I would. I would. I'm practicing for my next job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's pretend my lunch is done because I had a sip. There we go. It was under a minute. It didn't even it didn't even track. We really need to let it take more than a minute here for the sake of the demonstration. We're not like the cell phone companies. We don't charge by the second. For <laughs> <laughs> no, we're the cell phone companies. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, they're charging I, by... Could yeah, I tell you yeah, some no. stories of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dear me, we won't get sidetracked on that. Oh, we might, we but might we're going to try not to. The indignation <laughs> will start filling the airwaves. Okay, so I've finished those two activities. Now... If I single click there, I'm going to go show overview. And now I can see a breakdown of the time that I've spent today. So there's Tuesday. I've spent however much time now. I didn't spend quite a, a minute. That was a rough day. Lunch. Yeah. Maybe you get so more done go. tomorrow, though. Maybe I will. Short demo. <laughs> One minute. There you go. Uh, so now the neat thing is, is you can take that. You can look at totals. Okay, which right now, because I'm I really only clocked one minute, it's not it's not showing me anything. But your totals are going to show a breakdown and, and bar graphs of everything that went on. And then from there, if you're satisfied or you want to generate a report, you can actually save the report. In which case, you can choose an HTML report, tab separated values, XML, even an iCal file. So with that iCal file, you can subscribe your calendar, like we did last week with uh, with the Category Five TV calendar. You could set it up in Zimbra, you could set it up uh, in your iCal software, your calendar. You could have it automatically update your Google Calendar, for example. Very nice. ICS is a, is a wonderful thing for sharing your calendar with other users as well in read-only mode. So, so that will allow you to show the time that you spent working uh, or doing any particular tasks in an ICS format. So that program, again, is called Hamster. It's available as a free download on Linux, and it requires GNOME. And uh, that being, of course, because it's a GNOME panel application. But as I said, you can also execute the application through accessories. You'll see a new option there called Time Tracker. So if you're not running GNOME, I'm sure that would probably work with the GNOME libraries, uh, even though you may not be able to integrate it directly into your panel. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and you'll find us online at www.category5.tv. Nice to have you here. Indeed. Yeah. It is. Uh, it's. It's. It'd be nice to uh, say hello to uh, to our friend friend Christy here. Is is your mic on? You can yeah. you can fire that up, sure. Just so we can hear you. All right. Hey, how are you? This oh. mean we're gonna get the weather tonight. We are. Yeah, we're gonna. All get right. Weather forecast. Hello. <laughs> now, how have things been going? Excellent. Interested to know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, I miss Category Five, but I'm. I'm I'm learning how to live and and not be on Category 5 TV. It, it's been a long, hard fight, though. <laughs> <laughs> this is like watching an episode of Stargate Universe with the cameraography. Either that or it's an advertisement for Dasani. Is cameraography anything like videography? It's something like that. You'd have to be an expert to tell the difference, huh? <laughs> You'd have to be. Christy, it's so good to see you. Maybe we can swap uh, swap positions here for no, a moment. No, I'm not moving. We're gonna, I'm going to get oh. Christy on the air, and we're going to do some, uh, All right. some news. I will... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to back up, step out of the way, grab makes another it, coffee. Makes it sound so sad. Tune up the guitar. No. <laughs> Just giving you a break. Yeah, there you go. Break time. See you Spelling minute, you off for a minute. This is Category 5 TV. Nice to see you. Hey. Hey. You're looking good. Thank you. You're like looking the hair? good. Yeah. Thanks. So, like the hair. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it Christy Van Noort? Is that? Noort. Van Noort. Noort. Yes. Like Noort. No. Yeah. Jot would know all about that. Yeah? Yeah. So that's what we're going by. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to change all your photographics and everything. Well, no. No. For media purposes, I'm still Burton. You're going to go by Burton? Yeah. So what are you tonight? That, that way I can hide out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Christy Burton so, yes, slash me. Van Nort. Yeah. Like North without the H. <laughs> hey, it's great to see you. Now, you, you haven't, uh, you, Christy nice showed girl. up, kind of <laughs> got, got here just as yeah. we were going live, so uh, mm -hmm. you, you feel like doing some news awesome. tonight? Yeah. I know that you've been dying to tell everybody about the weather. Well, I have been. <laughs> Actually, there's lots of snow. 
That's it. <laughs> Lots of snow. Everywhere. That's your forecast New York, East for Coast, Canada. West Coast, snow. It's been unbe unbelievable. And snow and yeah. snow and snow. 17 feet of snow in Victoria. 17 feet. In BC. Yeah, 17 so feet. See, now that's people, newsworthy. People were tunneling out of their houses. We, we actually saw, um, I think it was CBC, was showing um, people in an apartment and a second floor balcony was where you had to be to get out because the entire wow. first floor balcony was covered with snow. That's unreal. Hmm. Where's that? That was in Victoria. Wow. Well, uh, you can take it away oh, at, wow. uh, at any news. point. news. Yeah. Okay. See so how you do on the fly without any proofreading. Oh, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Microsoft has issued a warning about a serious vulnerability in all versions of its Internet Explorer browser. If exploited by a booby-trapped web page, the bug would allow attackers to take control of an unprotected computer. A workaround for the bug has been produced while Microsoft works on a permanent fix. In a statement, Microsoft said it was investigating the bug, and in the meantime, it recommended those concerned use a protection system known as the Enhanced Mitigation ex Experience Toolkit, what is he doing? Which can be downloaded <laughs> by visiting cat5.tv, emet, that's E-M-E-T. And he has a snowball. Isn't this wonderful? Oh, An no, illustration, we, we have graphic illustration of the weather. This is, <laughs> this is from outside, and this is what we have here in Barrie, Ontario. Lots and lots and lots of this. It can I throw it if at it camera? weren't for the cameras, I, I would honestly, I would throw it at John's, it. John's, John's covering the camera. He, he knows, he knows me that I'm untrustworthy. I have five bucks. <laughs> I have five bucks, says you won't. <laughs> if you, I'll put a little bit. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so that's uh, the uh, vulnerability on uh, Internet Explorer. Amazon announced yesterday that the third generation Kindle is now the best selling product in Amazon's history, beating the previous bestseller, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows. On Christmas Day, more people turned on new Kindles for the first time, downloaded more Kindle apps, and purchased more Kindle books than any day in history. The most purchased and most gifted Kindle book on Christmas Day was Stieg Larsson's The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo which is still on sale for five U.S. dollars. Jeff Bezos, Bezos, somebody might know how to pronounce that, founder and CEO of Amazon, I guess I should know that, commented, we're seeing that many of the people who are buying Kindles also own an LCD tablet. Customers report using their LCD tablets for games, movies, and web browsing, and their Kindles for reading sessions. They report preferring Kindle for reading because it weighs less, eliminates battery anxiety with its month-long battery life, and has the advanced paper-like pearl e-ink display that reduces eye strain, doesn't interfere with sleep patterns at bedtime, and works outside in direct sunlight, an important consideration, especially for vacation reading. Kindle's $139 price point is a key factor. It's low enough that <coughs> people don't have to choose. The 139 US dollar price is for the Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi? <laughs> Had to say it. Um, Wi-Fi only Kindle. Uh, a version with Wi-Fi and 3G costs $189. Samsung is planning to debut a portable media player to rival Apple's iPod Touch next month at CES. The Galaxy player will be just under 10 millimeters thick and powered by Android 2.2 Froyo. According to the Samsung Hub blog reports, the device will have an 800 by 400 4 inch LCD, a 1 gigahertz hummingbird processor, and Wi Fi connectivity. It will reportedly be available in 8 gigs, 16 gigs, and 32 gig storage capacities and come with a front facing camera for video conferencing as well as a 3.2 megapixel rear facing camera. Much in the way the iPod Touch is essentially an iPhone without the phone features, the Samsung Galaxy Player will be based on their successful Galaxy 5S smartphone minus the phone features. The oldest color camera film ever made will fade into the history books on December 30th as the last laboratory in the world that processes the film runs out of the chemicals to develop it. 
The oh. film has been used to capture many of the most iconic color images of the 20th century. When Abraham Zapruder filmed the Kennedy assassination, he used Kodachrome. Kodachrome was the first commercially successful color film and has been in production for 74 years. Kodak announced last year it would not be producing any more as they consider it to be no longer viable. Duane's photo in Parsons, Kansas, the last laboratory, still processes 700 rolls every day but will grind to a halt abruptly this week. The real difference between Kodachrome and all the other color films is that the dyes that make up the image you see in the film in Kodachrome don't get incorporated into the film until it's actually developed, said Grant Steiny, who runs the lab. Kodachrome was appreciated by professionals for its vibrant colors and accuracy as well as its storage longevity. The final roll of Kodachrome manufactured was used by photographer Steve McMurray of Nash Steve McCurry, sorry, of National Geographic fame and processed in July. The film was so popular that singer Paul Simon even wrote a song about it. Do you want me to sing that now or do you want me to keep doing the news here? Kodachrome the new Category 5 <laughs> TV know website will grace the internet on January 1st at 11.01 a.m. The launch, being called 11.01.01.11.01, plays homage to the beloved binary code as we endeavor to launch a sophisticated social media platform, taking Category 5 TV out of cluttered website status and into the future with powerful Ajax-based content and a brand new interface. Some notable improvements you'll notice right away are things such as a much more integrated video experience and improved overall design and the ability for viewers to submit video testimonials not to mention we'll be giving our viewers many new ways to win free stuff. If you're already a registered insider, your account will automatically be moved over to the new site. If you're new here, make sure you register on January 1st for your chance to gain some bonus Category 5 viewer points. The new Category 5.tv will launch at 11.01 this Saturday morning. Don't miss it. Get the full stories at Category 5.tv newsroom. The Category 5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions from Gadget Wisdom Guru, Becca Ferguson, and our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at category5.tv. For the Category.5 newsroom, I'm Christy Burton. Ben Nort. Burton. Ben Nort. <laughs> Except that you said Category.5, category mm -hmm. but that's, that's, uh, that's okay. People know who we are. That was good. Well, at least I didn't. And at least I didn't say the call letters of the last station I worked for. That was tough, eh? It was really tough. You ever, yeah, I used you to have answer my happen. home phone by my radio station call. Yeah, <laughs> it's a tough thing. Yeah. Well, it's so good to see you. Well, thanks for so good to thanks see for you coming too. on and. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was it actually. Yeah. This is Category Five Technology TV, and we're online triple w dot category five dot TV. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thanks. Nice to see you. Here comes Eric. Welcome back. I forgot to get coffee. I got snowballs. I didn't get coffee. <laughs> you went and got a snowball and no coffee? Unbelievable. I went and got young Christy a snowball because we were talking about snow. It still hasn't mm. completely melted. Thank you. Thank you. All right, lots going on tonight. What is happening here? It's the snowball. <laughs> I'm just Sorry, folks, we're just, we're just experiencing some interference. But, uh, oh, we have a good time. You know, you could... No, eh, Christy? Balance it on my head. What do you think, Chris? No, Christy's... She's such an adult. <laughs> She's taking it out to throw it She's at your car. She's acting like such an adult. She's oh. taking the snowball outside. To throw it at your car. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll, uh, I'd love to, if we've got any more questions, if you, if you have a question for me in the chat room, category5.tv... Uh, I've got time for probably one more question before we get looking at VirtualBox 4.0. Well, we have uh, oh, here's another one from Ron Dugay. Hey, Ron. Dugay. Ron. Hi, Robbie. Thanks hey. for your help regarding my computer that was slow to boot. Hey, no problem. You gave me lots of very good information on how to solve my problem. Um, in the end, it, uh, he changed out the hard drive and I'm up and running faster than before. Thanks again. Oh, so it ended up being a, uh, a hard drive failure or yeah. something along those lines. 
I think, you know, I think sometimes you'll find that with a hard like drive, that. it'll get yeah. a little slower, and you think, eh, what is it, what is it, and then suddenly you have imminent failure. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what can happen is um, if, for example, if uh, you've got a whole bunch of bad sectors, and they're, and those sectors have to be moved to a safe location, right? If there aren't any more sectors to move those bad sectors to, ah. or to log those bad sectors, then we can run into some problems. So. But hey, that's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Let's take a look at VirtualBox. Let's do it. It's a nice view of Eric. Hey, hey Eric. Hey. How are you, buddy? This is the virtual Eric. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So VirtualBox.org is the place that you can pick up uh, the Oracle VirtualBox 4.0 software, which we're still not used to saying, being that uh, the software was developed by Sun Microsystems. However. Oracle is adding their two cents worth to the software, and it's certainly uh, a worthy addition. We're getting lots of new features, and I'm really starting to feel push. VirtualBox is working its way towards the server market, and oh. that's an exciting thing because VMware is always. I was going to say, how's VMware? VMware uh, held on to that with the SX server and and the cloud, and with you know all the the software that they've uh, they've done, having released uh, VMware Server uh, as a free application several years ago. Uh, but now VirtualBox, I'm finding, you know, with the, the addition of things like iSCSI concentrator support, well, who else needs that but a server environment, mm -hmm. really? We're talking about uh, massive amounts of storage. So it's certainly not for their, their focus is, is kind of seeming to go towards the server. Other notable uh, features that are being added to 4.0 or that have been added to 4.0, of course, the GUI has been completely redesigned, which is fantastic. Uh, they've got some new features such as the, uh, the an automatic thumbnail that refreshes itself and doesn't actually take a lot of overhead. So if you're, for example, you're installing an application in your virtual machine, you can have that virtual machine minimized and just see a little thumbnail that allows you to see if the uh -huh. if it's prompting you for, for further input. Because so you can carry on and be doing something else. You can be doing something yeah. else. That's just one example, but it's kind of nice to have that Very thumbnail nice. as well. And you can disable it if you are concerned about the resources that it takes. Uh, also, the ability to hide the virtual machine pop-up menu. You know that menu at the bottom of VirtualBox mm -hmm. that typically when you're in full screen, it can get a little bit annoying when you go to point at the bottom and all of a sudden the menu pops up. You can actually disable that in full screen and quick, and quick switch oh. now. So that's a really good feature uh, of the new VirtualBox. That gets my vote. Definitely. <laughs> Uh, they're doing things a little bit differently with the new extension pack in order to get USB 2.0 support, PXE, uh, booting from network and remote desktop for the virtual box uh, end of things. Uh, that is coming through an extension pack, which we're going to be installing in just a minute to show you how it works. And of course, lots and lots of bug fixes. But the other thing that kind of seems to be pointing them towards the server is that you can throttle the CPU and the bandwidth of the guest operating system. Uh. In a server environment, that's fantastic that you can say, okay, the exchange server is only allowed to take, you know, 10% of overall CPU usage, for example. So being able to throttle that is, is something that seems to be pushing them, again, towards the server market. But that said, we've still got our support for 3D hardware acceleration, uh, which is always improving. We're seeing lots of bug fixes that uh, are going to push things uh, even further along on, uh, for the desktop user as well. And uh, certainly, it's looking looking really, really good. So, VirtualBox, of course, uh, you can if you're using Ubuntu, you can get it real easy and install the latest version using Perfect Ubuntu. Available as a free download, perfectubuntu.category5.tv. If you're on any other operating system or distribution of Linux, uh, of course, VirtualBox runs on multiple platforms, uh, including Linux, Windows, Mac OS X, right, Solaris. So. You can get it from virtualbox.org by clicking on downloads. We're going to go through with the VirtualBox 4.0 for Linux host download. And I'm doing this on Ubuntu, but I'm not going to use Perfect Ubuntu because I want you to see how this is actually done. Um, and you'll see that there are pre-compiled packages for various different distributions, right? You can download those if you want, but of course, using a package manager such as apt-get for a Debian package, you'll be able to get the updates with DKMS. So as new versions of VirtualBox come in, you don't have to continue to, you know, they will automatically update itself right. along with your other system updates. That said, you, you may have found that VirtualBox has a really good built-in updating system. You turn on VirtualBox and it says, there's a new update, click here to get the update. But the problem with that is it's not done through apt-get, so you, you have to kind of do it yourself 
it's a little bit different. So we're going to do it through apt-get. So we need to find out, I've, and I've scrolled down on the Linux page here, we need to find out which line we want to use. We're not going to copy this whole thing because you'll see that each one of these lines is in fact a different apt source based on what version of Debian you're using. So for Linux, uh, for Ubuntu, I'm going to be on Hardy, Intrepid, Jaunty, what Karmic, about Jaunty Jackalope. Lucid. I like that. Well, there it is, Jaunty, <laughs> right? So there, if you were on Jaunty, there's the okay. line that you want to add to your sources list file, okay? But how do we tell what distribution we're on or what version of the distribution we're on? We're going to jump into our terminal, and I'm going to type in cat slash etc slash ls release. Uh, I thought it was. What was it again? Do you know? I don't know. Uh, why am I blanking? I thought it was, no, because LS obviously is not it. I did it earlier from the top of my head. LSB release. That's what it was. I love Linux history. Because when I got it right earlier, it remembered it. Okay, so typing cat slash etc slash lsb dash release, you'll see that distrib code name is Lucid. So I'm actually running Lucid on this computer 10.04, the latest LTS from Ubuntu. So knowing that, I want to grab this line here, okay, because this is the apt line for Lucid. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go back to my terminal, sudo. Uh, let's see, gedit for my GNOME editor, etc apt sources.list. It's going to ask me for my password. What I'm doing there is sudo, become a super user, gedit, bring up my text editor, and then the file is slash etc slash apt slash sources.list. That file contains all of the repositories that Ubuntu or Linux is going to use in order to get. Ah updated software through apt. Makes it absolutely simple for you to get your software. This will allow you to access it right through Synaptic Package Manager, for example. I've created a new line, and I've pasted in what I've got there for Lucid, and I'm going to save that, and I can do that because I'm sudo for that command. If I forgot that sudo, I wouldn't have the authority to overwrite this file. Okay. So now I want to go sudo apt get update to load the new list, because now I'm ready to go. Once that's done, and it doesn't take long, sudo. This won't hurt, did it? No. sudo apt-get install. This is the command to install an application using apt-get. Virtualbox dash 4.0. It's going to prompt me and say, you've got one newly installed, one to remove. And you've heard me say before, any time that apt is going to tell you that it's going to remove something, make sure it's not going to be something that's breaking your system. So observe what it is that it's actually going to be removing. And you see up here, the following package will be removed, VirtualBox 3.2. Because I already have the older version of VirtualBox installed, it's telling me it's got to take the old oh, one out okay. and put the new one in. So I'm going to approve that because that's exactly the what I want to do. So I'm going to say yes and let that go. So with apt-get, this whole system with using the Debian package uh, the repository and editing your sources list, it's actually going to download that software, the latest version that's currently available in that repository, and it's going to update my computer to the latest version of VirtualBox. We're going to be good to go. It's at 13%. It says we've got two minutes to go. This is Category 5 Technology TV. We are updating VirtualBox 3.2 to version 4.0 tonight, and uh, we're going to get to see some of the latest features. All right. This is probably a good time to just point out that Canada beat the Czech Republic in the uh, in junior hockey uh, tournament today. Great seven, time to seven point to that two. Out. I just thought we had a little good for little Canada. Space here. Yeah. Yes, indeed. So that's uh, two and zero oh for Canada. It uh, took Russia yesterday. Okay. <laughs> just you're not following the hockey, Robbie. Not, I haven't been following the hockey <laughs> recently. I just been too busy. Oh my goodness! No, I, I'm. That was part of the arrangement when when I got married. Was okay. You just don't ever. It just don't start. You d you don't want to start the hockey because then you you know that you can't get out of it. It's like 
I'm fortunate because she loves Star Trek. Because had I gone into this marriage and her not love Star Trek, I would have been in big trouble. But if I got into hockey now, there's no way I'm taking taking her to no way. see hockey. Yeah. Hmm. I gotta, I gotta watch. I can't imagine, John. <laughs> Mandov is asking me in the chat room, have I ever heard of Synergy? Well, that's kind of like uh, when you and that's I get together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what we have, <laughs> Mandov. <laughs> Synergy is a great application to allow you to use your mouse between multiple computers. And that's actually what I use here. So my laptop here is controlled by the same mouse and keyboard as our broadcast system. And that is using Synergy Plus. And it's a fantastic application. Uh, which uh, spans all platforms. So if you have a Mac, a Linux computer, and a Windows computer here, my broadcast system is Windows, my laptop is Linux, and I'm sharing the mouse and keyboard between those two computers with two monitors. It's very, very good. I think Amoto says not all Canadians are puck chasers. Nope, not all. Well, when you skate as slowly as I... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. This is uh, this is getting there. We're almost there. Look at this. It's already stopped VirtualBox kernel modules, getting ready to remove VirtualBox, and moving through. It's unpacking my new newly downloaded VirtualBox 4.0. And if we're fortunate, now we've only got three minutes left of the show, but I think we're still. I think this is going to happen in time that we can actually bring this up on our screen. Here we go. Here you go. Uninstalling the old DKMS modules and installing the new ones. That's a good thing. In case you were wondering, DKMS is the tool that allows it to keep itself up to date and recompile the kernel modules, which is necessary for virtualization automatically. We may run out of time there, and if we do, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at our extended, um, the, the new, what are, the, what are the, the new extensions pack um, at a later date. But what I'll show you back at their website as that's finishing its install, I'm going to go back to the downloads page. And for all platforms, you see VirtualBox 4.0 Oracle VM VirtualBox Extension Pack. You can just click there and save that file. OK? Very, very quick file to download. All right? That is going to be necessary in order for you to have additional features like uh, your USB 2.0 hardware support. Now that said, I'm, I'm telling you to click on it, but we do need to observe the licensing that surrounds that. That is licensed for personal and evaluation use. Uh, so if you're going to be using that in, in, Linux, uh, in a business environment, then it is for evaluation use only. And if you want to take it um, further than the evaluation, you will have to purchase a license from Oracle. Uh, that's just that one final, that extensions pack. So that's fully done installing. And so you can see, even though we're pressed for time here with only a couple minutes left of the show, it's so fast to set up that we, we could do it even with that little amount of time left. So you see I brought up VirtualBox, and it's now the latest version of virtu VirtualBox. You'll notice immediately that there are it's added new features to your, your system, including uh, we've got, like I said, we've got uh, the new support for different controllers and things. Now I need that extension pack to get the iSCSI concentrator. To install our extensions pack, we're going to go into Preferences. I'm going to do this real quickly. Go into Extensions, okay, and we're going to add the extension pack. It warns you about uh, what it is you're about to do. Read that. There's our license agreement, okay. Do be mindful of that, especially if you're going to be using this for commercial use. It's for evaluation only. And that quickly we're up and running with VirtualBox, full version. So it's just a little bit different the way that they're doing it now with the fact that USB 2.0 support and everything has to be done through the extension pack. So we'll be taking a look further at that over the next couple of weeks. But in the meantime, it's been uh, really great having you here. You can email us at live at category5.tv. And do remember that uh, we are launching our new website at 11.01 on January 1st, 2011. Uh, so make sure you complete check out with a, a a bio from the short there. track guy sitting yes. beside you, right? Category five TV is the place to be. Make sure you check it out January first. Have a great week. See you, everybody, and happy Bye. new year. Happy new year. Bye bye. <laughs>